When the massive earthquake and tsunami struck Fukushima in northeast Japan on March 11th in 2011, the disaster claimed over 18,000 lives throughout the coastal Tohoku region and also decimated the seaside town Ishinomaki. Not long after, residents reported frequent ghost sightings in Ishinomaki. People would describe seeing shadows on the other side of a window. Another resident claimed that he had seen his mother's ghost immediately after the tsunami had swept her house away. Strangely though, the most common reports of ghost sightings came from taxi drivers, where many had experienced phantom riders who vanished from the backseat of their cab the moment they reached their destination. The drivers have reported seeing ghosts with no heads, bodies that do not have limbs and spirits of dead people. One such encounter was a female passenger who held a cab a few months after the disaster. The woman instructed the taxi driver to take to a mini Mahama district, but he told the passenger that no one lives in that area due to the devastation caused by the tsunami. The woman replied, have I died? When the driver checked his passenger, he found that the back seat was empty. Another taxi driver recounted picking up a man in his twenties. When the taxi driver looked in the rearview mirror, he saw the man pointing towards the front of the car. When the driver asked some passenger his destination, the young man said, to the mountain. However, when they reached the mountain, the passenger was nowhere to be found. Another taxi driver regularly sees ghosts wandering around the town and gets physical symptoms of tingling and depression when he is near them. Some of the drivers often pay for the ghost riders' trips out of their own pockets in the hopes that the journey is what they needed to complete. Tayo Kanida, a Buddhist priest, claims that many people visited him concerned that they had seen ghosts and needed help. Many of the visitors had lost a loved one in the tsunami, where Reverend Kanita could sense a lot of pain that they had bottled up and would listen to them for hours at a time, where their grief and loss and anguish would finally be released. Reverend Kanita said that if you see ghosts, tell them you are dead. There's a world for you to go to. We will remain to make sure we revive our relationship to this city. Do not worry about us. The Reverend said that over the years, he has had many people visit him in a distressed state, needing his assistance. On one occasion, his wife answered the door and found a distressed young woman by the name of Amy being assisted into the temple by two other women. The young woman appeared to be ill and claimed that she feels many people inside of her and she cannot stop them. She pleaded with Reverend Kanita to help her. She said that many spirits were entering her body and she cannot stop them, and all she could feel was pain and wanted to die. She said she could feel the spirit of a young girl crying inside her, and the spirit of a man was holding her leg and would not let go. She said that as soon as Reverend Kanita grabbed her feet, the spirit said, Who are you? And he replied that he was a reverend of the temple. The spirit then said, What is the reverend doing here? The young woman could see the man yelling and screaming and was terrified. After a long period of time and prayer, the Reverend Kanita burned some incense in front of the Buddha and the young woman was released from her possessions. The Reverend claimed that hers was the worst case of possession that he'd ever seen. The woman's personality would change whenever she was possessed. The Reverend asked the young woman whether she had lived near the disaster zone and had she experienced a tsunami firsthand. Had anyone close to you lost their lives in the tsunami? The young woman said no to everything, unfortunately had nothing to do with the tsunami. However, what she said next to the Reverend was interesting when she said that even before the earthquake had struck, she was always bothered by ghosts. But one year after the earthquake, many ghosts started invading her life. After the initial harrowing visit to the temple, Amy was invited to see the Reverend any time for his help and guidance. Amy accepted his offer and would sometimes arrive at 7pm and would not leave until around 1am and 2am in the morning. While the Reverend and Amy were meeting, he would listen to the sad voices of the spirits who had lost their lives in the tsunami. Amy said that after meeting with Reverend Kanita, she found that she was channeling more and more spirits. One of the spirits was a troubled young girl, who at the time the tsunami struck was running and holding her little brother's hand, and when the waves crashed around them, she was forced to let go of his hand. The little girl claimed that as they were running, her little brother said that he couldn't run anymore, but she did not reply because they had to keep running from the water. Amy said that she could hear, smell, and feel everything the young girl had experienced, and even the touch of the little brother's hand. She also felt the intense fear that the little girl was feeling. The last thing she saw was the little boy being washed away. 
Reverend Kanita was able to speak to the little girl and the girl reached out to him and he held her hand. The little girl then said, no, and she let go of his hand. She then said, mother, mother, I want my mother. Amy said that she felt helpless for the little girl and asked why nobody was helping her. The little girl wanted to apologize to her mother for letting go of her brother's hand and kept saying sorry to her. She was looking everywhere for her mother. Reverend Kanita's wife was close by and approached the spirit of the young girl and chose to act as her mother and held her hand. She said that the little girl had a very strong grip and she said to her, Mother is right here. I will never let you go. You are always here with me. And then said to her, Let's walk towards the light. The little girl followed her. The wife said to the little girl, Go to the light. Everyone there is waiting for you. It was at this point that Amy let go of her hand. The little girl had found peace, and so had Amy. The Reverend realized that Amy was obviously as sensitive and was unaware of her psychic abilities. In no way did she suffer from mental illness. Unfortunately for Amy, after the tragic disaster of Fukushima struck, she was inundated by the spirits of many people who had lost their lives. 